Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to talk about Anthony Gordon, who Chelsea are apparently willing to spend 60 million of their earth pounds to buy him from Everton. So this is how Chelsea lined up this season. It's a very unsettled front line. We know, we know there are gonna be changes in their attack in the coming weeks. Gordon, he's a very versatile player. He could kind of play along the front three as he has done for Everton. Uh, possibly play at wing back as well, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. Let's have a look at where he played. So, as I said, very versatile, plays across the front line. In fact, his time was pretty much split equally amongst the left, about 30% there, right about 35 and in the middle about 35 as well. So that's something that Thomas Tuchel will really like, his versatility. This is his pizza chart provided by the good people at Smarter Scout, which kind of shows some of his strengths and weaknesses. Immediately, you can see here, progressive passing and his carry and dribble volume. Very good stats there, very good numbers. And also his defensive numbers, not too bad as well. We'll talk in a bit about his pressing and his work rate. It's been very impressive for Everton. One thing you can't really see on here is how quick he is. He's an extremely quick player. He's very direct, very good at pressing and a very, very hard worker. Those are sort of the main attributes which he used last season to such good effect. We can see here all of his carries last season. These are carries of five meters or more in the Premier League for Everton. And so the start of the line is where he picks up the ball and the circle is where he does something with it. So a shot, a cross or whatever. These are the chances he created at the end of those carries. So there are six of them on either flank. Again, kind of points to his directness and coming in from the right for a few chances created here. And then shooting, we see he's very direct. He's cutting inside, he's getting away shots at goal. Often, admittedly, from not great positions. Um, and his end product is definitely something that he's working on. So only four goals last season and three of them were deflected. We're also gonna look here at where he had his touches last season. So again, kind of reflects, you know, uh, likes being out wide, a couple of bits in the middle here, 10% um, down the flanks, loves to attract a defender to him and beat them one-on-one -on -one with his pace. Not necessarily very skillful or tricky, or flashy, which is a shame because we could call him Flash Gordon, but we can't do that. And we also see here his work rate in his own half. He's getting back into deep areas. Everton, of course, had a low block as well. Very defensive team, often only sort of 30% possession at times under Lampard last season. A couple of examples here of his good work with the football. This is a game against Chelsea last season. Uh, he picks up the ball from a throw in here and he's got two players around him. Uh, he's not really got many options, so he kind of tries to take the game by the scruff of the neck as he liked to do so often. And we see here that he sort of swivels inside both players, uses his physicality, you know, he's six foot as well, uh, which kind of helps with his aerial duels and his defensive ability. Skips through both players and gets a shot away with his left foot, which only just misses at the near post. That's another thing to say, is that he's predominantly right-footed, but he's pretty comfortable on his left foot as well. And although he's only scored sort of four goals last season, he was pretty prolific uh, at youth level for Everton. So I think there's something in there that Thomas Tuchel will look to improve on. Another example here, this is against Brighton. Uh, he stood up Kukurea here on, the, uh, on Everton's right, potentially a future teammate. Something he likes to do, stand up a defender and either go to the line or cut inside. This time he cuts inside, very direct. Again, very few options for him to play the ball here, so he goes it alone. Cuts inside, attracts four defenders to him here, one, two, three, four, all ball watching. Immediately creates space out here. He plays the pass to this man and keeps running. He's not stopping and admiring his pass, he's keeping going. He's now over here, highlighted Gordon. Kukure is here out of position. Bright's defense, all sort of out of position. And number two here, I forget his name, but I'm sure he's very good. Puts in a cross for Gordon to sweep home at the near post. Very good finish and his one non-deflected goal last season, I believe. Uh, and one more example here of his work rate and his defensive capabilities, which will be very important in, in the Chelsea team should they sign him. Chelsea moving the ball out from the back, as they're very good at. Sterling here has picked up a really good position between the lines. Gordon, it's not necessarily his job to, to track Sterling, not at all really, um, but he takes it upon himself to sprint 20, I mean, there are other defenders here who can cover, but it's Gordon who's doing it. 20, 30, 40, 50 yards, slide tackle, and stops attack, which is very important because Chelsea got an overload here, two on one. They've got a one on one in the middle, so if Sterling plays that pass through there, then they're potentially creating a very good chance. In a variety of formations last season, Lampard played 4 3 3, 4 2 3 1, 3 4 3. Gordon was able to adapt himself into those formations and did a very good job. So we can see why Chelsea want to sign him. Where would they play him? One point that's been made about Anthony Gordon is that he might be a bit similar to what Chelsea have got already in attack. Tuchel's trying to reinvent their attack. He's got Raheem Sterling, who's a very good player, similar to Gordon in a, in, a, in a couple of ways, but we can see here in those carry and dribble volume and progressive passing numbers, he's not quite as good as Gordon, certainly aerial duels as well. Who else have you got? Mason Mount, a very different player, 
uh, more sort of static uh, on the ball, but makes good runs off the ball. And Ziyech as well, who we say might be on the way out. But again, if you look at those sort of carry and dribble volume stats, um, not as good as Gordon. So where is he potentially going to fit in? This is how Chelsea are lined up at the moment. The usual sort of 3-4-3 formation. Very sort of narrow forwards. Might try and pick up these areas here. We know they're very, very good at bringing the ball out from the back and playing through the thirds. When they get to the final third, that's where things have sort of fallen down this season. It's only been three games, but uh, they've only created three big chances, which is way below a team like Man City on 11. Uh, scored three goals so far. Again, that's something Tuchel's really going to look to improve this season. They scored 76 last year, which is way down on Man City and Liverpool, who are sort of high 90s hitting the century mark so let's bring Gordon in this is potentially a position he would take up as we said he can sort of play this side he can play this side he has played as a false nine for Everton this season as well but I don't think that really suits him at all and he likes these little areas here what he is very good at is always wanting possession finding space to come pick up the ball and then turning defenders isolating defenders and taking them on generating space for others, but also getting himself into very good positions in the final third. So you can certainly envision a scenario where Chelsea are building up here through someone like Jorginho or Gallagher or Loftus-Cheek and Gordon's here, he's demanding the ball and he's attracting the attention of defenders towards him. Picks up possession here and then again what we know about Chelsea is the wing backs are so important. So if Gordon's doing that and attracting defenders to him, then Rhys James here has suddenly got an overlap here for a big kind of space to run into and create chances for Havertz, Mount to come in, Kukure at the back post, Loftus-Cheek can get involved as well as he wants. And as we saw with that example earlier from Gordon, once he's playing passes, he's looking at what to do next. He's feisty, he's trying to get into the box uh, for those goal scoring areas. Another thing that Tuchel might like to do with Gordon is play him at wing back. Reese James, as we know, one of the best wing backs in the country and a very good attacker and defender, but he is a little bit injury prone. Anthony Gordon, with his pace, with his directness, with his stamina, with his work rate, with his pressing, would definitely fit these areas here. He's effectively played as a wing back for Everton last season because he was taking up these kind of positions here, defending Lampard's low block, but he'd be suitable for a counter attack and he'd also be suitable as a wing back driving into these areas here and then you've got people like Loftus-Cheek or Havertz or Mount feeding him the ball down here um, for others to get in the box and finish off chances. So while he's definitely not worth 60 million now, judging on what he's done in his Everson career, and you can see what people are getting their knickers in a twist or whatever underwear they choose to wear, no one in their right mind would say he's worth 60 million right now. But you can see why Tuchel wants him and you can see why he's a very good player and how he'd fit into Chelsea's squad. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Ollie Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. There are journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.